In 2009, we thought we'd create a centre for brain research, bring the scientists together in the university together as one pillar, bring the neurosurgeons, urologists, and all the clinicians together as another pillar, and bring the community together as the other pillar. The main objectives here at the Centre for Brain Research is to do brain research a little bit differently. The underlying philosophy is to bring together clinicians and scientists and the community to form a partnership whereby the research we do is answering the questions that our patients and our families and our clinicians want answered. In the Centre for Brain Research, one of the sort of pillars is actually the community and uh, the people with the various diseases. We derive inspiration and research questions from them as well. They help guide some of the directions our research has gone in. But we have a responsibility too, to give them as much knowledge as we can, to have them involved in the, uh, the most cutting edge studies that we can, the opportunity to be involved in interventions that might make a difference to the course of the disease for them. Huntington's is a bilateral disease, so we would take one side of the brain, carefully block it into about 60 blocks, and would freeze them down. The other half of the brain, we would perfuse them through the blood vessels, which were carefully dissected off, and we fix that side of the brain, and that means we could do neurochemical analyses on that side, but do genetics and do chemical analyses on the other side, on the fresh tissue. We would receive the brain tissue within two and a half to three to 12 hours after death. No other brain bank in the world can equal that. At the Central Brain Research, we've got a biobank that essentially grows and studies human brain cells. Donated brains from people with Huntington's, from Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, motor neuron disease, epilepsy, even uh, glioblastoma, people with brain tumors. And this was funded initially and still is funded by a, a wonderful philanthropic award from the Hugh Green Foundation. The advantage that we have, I suppose, in, in, in our work is that we're studying the disease directly. And not only that, because we're keeping the cells alive, we can look at the function of human brain cells from a disease, from someone with, with the actual disease itself. And our belief is that if we study the human brain cells directly, firstly we can understand what might be causing the disease, but secondly we're able now to test drugs directly on those cells. Then for others with the disease in the future, those drugs are more likely to work in those people. Most of the animal models that are made are mouse models and we thought that there was room for a later onset model of Huntington's disease. So we decided that there would be space and utility for a large animal model where we can take our time to look at the progression of the disorder and allow the disorder to, to present as it does in humans. And so we made this animal and the animal consists of inserting the full length Huntington gene. And so what we're seeing in the animal is exactly the slow progression of the disorder that we'd expect to see. Animals live in Saudi in South Australia and they wander around a paddock and eat grass like normal sheep do. So in part we made the animals in order to investigate the progression of the disease, to look at the disease mechanism, and the other part is to test therapeutic options. So we got them involved with it and now that's blossoming. We've got funding from the USA out of Cure Huntington's Disease Initiative, CHDI. We're collaborating with people in Harvard, in Cambridge in England, Massachusetts, in New York and in Australia. And so it's really, it's an international effort. I do Kaupapa Māori research, which is about incorporating Māori values and practices into the work. So this means that a lot of the work that we do is home-based. We go into their homes and we talk to them. So I often take doctors and nurses in to spend time with them to do the clinical work. Uh, more recently in the study we're doing we've had to collect MRIs. Everything that we've done with them has been about embracing our māori in the laboratory and in the clinic and so that means that during my PhD when I was growing cells I incorporated what we call tikanga and then we've taken that through to the clinic and that we're respectful of cultural practices when we go into people's homes. I've been very lucky to collaborate with a neuroplasticity pioneer uh, Mike Merzenich and we developed a brain plasticity based training program. The theory is, is that it will build or strengthen the pathways in their brain that get weakened in Huntington's disease. So what we're trying to do is through neuroplasticity strengthen those pathways um, so that they remain strong instead of dying. I direct the stroke unit at our hospital, Auckland City Hospital, and we have a situation where most of our patients who come into the stroke unit are in a research study of some form, you know, with their permission obviously and our neuroscientists form part of the team. So they come on our interdisciplinary team meetings that we have discussing stroke patients. 
um, and they're considered part of the team. And that's important because we think that research is an integral part of the clinical care that we provide our patients. One of the most exciting uh, developments at the Centre for Brain Research is the establishment of the dementia research clinics. We want to delay the onset of dementia by five years, and if we manage to do that, we'll reduce the prevalence of dementia in this country by 50%. This brain bank, and we provide tissue not just for our researchers here, but for all research groups in New Zealand and also around the world. We send tissue to over 25 top leading research groups internationally. We ask the families, we said, are you happy for us to do this? They are ecstatic, contributing to the future health of our children and our grandchildren.